One of the things that we're seeing occurring on an increasing basis with a lot of farmers is to start what I call a full year rotation. And so they'll take portions of their farm and lay them out a full year from a traditional cash crop. And after the, the prior cash crop is pulled out, they'll go in with a cool season, follow that with a warm season cover crop, and then a second cool season. What that does is it allows opportunities not only to more thoroughly and rapidly rebuild and regenerate our soils, but it also allows for a full year rotation of livestock impact and revenue generation from those livestock, which in many instances we're finding the per acre net revenue generated from those livestock during that off rotation of cash crops is creating more net income per acre than the cash crops are. So, so you're actually getting a double benefit. You're not only creating more net revenue in that year than your cash crop would have generated, but you're putting money in the bank, so to speak, for the future because you are creating these incredible soil benefits that last for years and years after that. The other thing that we can think about is that when we're growing small grains, you know, we have a little bit different season in different parts of the country for small grains. So those are typically going to be harvested, depending on where you're located in the country, anywhere from uh, sometime in May, you know, through mid-summer, you know, July, those periods. And so after you come out with that grain crop, that allows you the opportunity to go in with a warm and cool season cocktail mix. And that allows for an extended grazing period starting in late summer and going all the way into the fall and, and being able to build up those benefits. Yeah, you know, the first thing obviously is if you don't have any prior experience, then you need to you know, start gaining experience. And that means, uh, you know, there's plenty of workshops and conferences that you can attend initially uh, to start getting an idea of resources and tools and so forth available to help teach you how to graze and what kind of infrastructure that you need and that will be most important. And even what kind of cattle to purchase uh, from genetics to class of cattle and how to market those cattle. So, so you need an education, you know, first and foremost. Don't, just like you wouldn't dive into planting any crop without educating yourself on that crop, you don't want to do this with livestock. Uh, secondly, I would highly advise that you visit other farmers who are already doing this because the best way to learn is to learn from those that are doing it. And what happens there is that they'll share with you the pros and cons, they'll share with you the mistakes that they made, and prevent you from repeating those same mistakes. And then third, you need to look at what is the most efficient and cost-effective infrastructure. Uh, if you're going to be grazing your row crop fields, then what type of fencing should you be looking at? And do you want permanent perimeter fencing, is that okay with you as the farmer or do you not want to impede your turn rows and, and do you want to have temporary perimeter fencing? That's going to wholly change what you do in terms of perimeter fencing. Interior fencing is much easier because that's typically just simply temporary single strand poly wire with tread in post. Uh, so, so usually no issues there. The same with your water resources. You're going to have to consider whether you want to always go with temporary water resources that you can move out of the way, or do you want to have strategically located permanent water sources that you can use and work around in your row crop operation. And then finally, you need to consider what is the best type of livestock enterprise for your particular operation, the region of the country you're located in, and what best fits your goals and objectives, your management style, and your expertise. 
uh, and, and then look at what are the market opportunities available for you. And one of the things that, that I always tell people that I work with is have multiple marketing opportunities at all times. Never lock yourself in to a single market parameter. But I think it's, it, it, for a person starting, it becomes overwhelming to try to absorb thinking about 20 or 30 different plants, um, moving fences, watering systems, all that stuff. So, I mean, in, in some cases, it's, it's easy just to go to a very basic, simple, I'm going to graze some, some wheat regrowth. And it can build you a comfort level as a first building block to, to complete the whole picture. Again, we can talk about people like Gabe Brown and, and Dave Brandt and many others that have been able to do this uh, highly successfully and, and has tr shown tremendous benefits. For those farmers that have eased into this, you know, doing just the cool season, once they get that livestock experience under their belt and once they understand the real benefits of cover crops, then it's allowing them to, to take that next step, sort of that leap of faith, and go into the full year rotations.